Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are gonna do something a bit unusual. Uh, I'm right in the middle of this big refactoring here. And um, what it's about is taking a lot of stuff in our web engine, libweb, and moving it from being malloc allocated to uh, being GC allocated. So essentially allowing our garbage collector that we use for JavaScript objects to also track and manage the lifetime of um, all kinds of objects in libweb. And the reason that we wanna do this is because we have a lot of reference cycles in the web engine and the uh, HTML specs are written uh, very much in a way that sort of assumes that objects can just point at each other um, without causing cycles. And we have a lot of memory leaks and uh, performance issues caused by this. So um, the best solution that I can see going forward is to just move everything into the garbage collector and then it will just solve all those cycles for us. So um, I'm like pretty deep into my refactoring branch already, but I thought um, it's time for a big piece that I haven't really attempted properly before. And maybe I could record it and we'll see how it goes. And that piece is probably the biggest piece of them all, uh, the DOM. Uh, so I've moved a whole bunch of classes over to the garbage collector already, uh, but not the DOM node hierarchy, uh, which actually is part of the event target hierarchy. Uh, so we have to move uh, event target. We have to make event target a garbage collected class uh, and then deal with all of its subclasses as well. So uh, we're probably not gonna be able to do all of it in one video because it's gonna take a very long time, but um, I thought I could at least show you how I start approaching this and we'll see how far we get. So uh, as you could see here, by the way, I last worked on this a couple of weeks ago, uh, but then I hit a major roadblock where it was not possible to construct objects in a certain order because we had some mistakes in our uh, JavaScript engine architecture. But Linus has now uh, worked very hard to unblock me on those things. So it's time to get back to trying this again. So essentially what we're gonna do here is we're going to make this thing inherit from a platform object. And platform object is um, in its turn a JS object. And um, a platform object is just IDL speak for an object that implements an IDL interface. And event target is such a thing. Um, you can actually look at our IDL interfaces if you look at the corresponding event target.idl file. Uh, it kind of describes the, the parts of this class that are exposed to JavaScript. Um, so that part uh, is, the easy, is easy. Uh, we also are going to need the JS object macro just to set up um, some of the um, some of the type defs so that they point to the right thing. Um, and then now there's like a million implications of this, and I can't predict all of them. But um, one major issue is that event targets and the whole DOM until this point has been reference counted. And you use ref putters to uh, store pointers into the DOM and to, to event targets. Uh, and that now goes away. So we can start by getting rid of the ref and unref functions. And um, we can also get rid of create wrapper, this pure virtual here, because um, this has been used until now to create sort of a wrapper JavaScript object that will wrap this event target. Uh, but now the event target becomes the, the JavaScript object. So it, this would just return itself. So this function is totally not necessary anymore because if you have the event target, you, ha you have a JavaScript object. Um, and we can also get rid of these, which are used for uh, implementing subclass specific reference counting. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna have to um, 
teach the garbage collector how to find all of the sort of things that an event target is pointing to. I guess we can do that right away, just so I can show you what that looks like. So what we'll do is we will override the uh, thing called visit edges, which is what the garbage collector uses to find um, things pointed to by, by a garbage collected object. So here, actually, let's put it near the top. So event target visit edges gets past a visitor, and then we just have to help the visitor find our children uh, or edges in the object graph. So in this case, it's going to be um, event listeners that are registered with this event target. So until now, they've been stored in a vector of handles, uh, but this is no longer necessary. So we don't need to uh, use handle anymore. Handle is a heavyweight smart pointer class that keeps garbage collected pointers alive. Now we can use the lightweight GC putter instead, which is just a raw pointer uh, with no special behavior. Likewise here, this thing we can get rid of, uh, JS handle, use GC putter. Um, and I guess that's it. Those were the, <laughs> the two main members. So now we have to teach visit edges how to visit those uh, things. So uh, in the first case, it's going to be something like event listener. And then we'll say visitor visit um, event listener dot putter. Okay, and then here for auto it um, over event hand map and then visitor visit um, it value better okay so we're visiting these event handlers registered with the target okay and now our constructor uh, we can't just default it anymore because I guess it needs to call up to uh, the base class with something we need I think we need to pass a prototype actually. So um, in our case, we need to pass the event target prototype, which we can only find via the uh, window object. So at the moment, we're going to have to grab it from there. And we will call up to the platform object base class constructor. Um, and we use this technique to fetch the event target prototype. And we also have to specify the class name here, just so that uh, it sort of it goes into a cache, where we cache the prototype, we create a prototype object the first time it's accessed, and then we cache it with this name. And this just allows us to find it again next time. Um, and then oh, I guess I need to actually we need to actually include event target prototype. Um, and this is not what the constructor looks like anymore. So let's update that. Okay. All right, so far so good. And we also need to update the build system and tell it that we no longer want it to generate a JavaScript wrapper class to wrap around event target. Uh, instead, we want to, um, we just want event target to be the JavaScript object. So um, let's see, I'm using Ladybird here for this because it allows me to build fewer things just to get testing. Uh, but the source code, of course, is still in the Serenity directory. Mm, so I think this goes in idle files, actually. Um, event target. So we're going to say no instance, which means that we don't generate a JavaScript wrapper for the instance object. Um, and actually, we also need to do this for everything that inherits from event target. So I guess we might as well get cracking on doing those as well. So like DOM node, no instance, um, element, everything that ends in element right here. 
that's uh, that's quite a few actually. So I guess we can do something like this. Um, we will replace that with element no instance. Boom. Document becomes no instance. Oops. Document fragment, document type, comment, character data, all the different node types. Uh, even the attribute nodes. Probably, I'm going to forget some here. Um, and, and don't worry, it'll tell us eventually. But um, there's a whole lot of classes that need to be converted. And it's going to be a whole lot of work to get this working. And this is actually something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time already. And something I wanted to do in WebKit for years as well while I was working on that, but there were always there was always some technical hurdle or um, some API that we had to support, um, which forced us to keep um, these JavaScript wrapper objects around C++ objects. But I think in LibWeb we should be able to actually garbage collect um, the DOM and and everything else finally. Um, it's it would be really awesome because it, it simplifies lifetime management and spec implementation a lot when you don't have to think about reference count. Uh, okay, so yeah, like trying to build is pretty optimistic. Um, so I guess we can bring out the problem view. We see no problems in event target H, but um, number of things in event target CBP. So I think we're going to go directly to node.h instead and just poke around with DOM node um, because we need to get the headers sorted before we start worrying about CPP files here in this case, I think. Um, once we once we get the headers to where they need to be, then it will be easier to, to iterate um, using incremental building, right? So... Um, Let's see, did I actually finish with event target.h? I guess for now. Right, so node becomes uh, interesting. So we inherit from event target. This matches what the web spec tells us to do. So this is the IDL uh, definition for DOM node, which just tells you that node inherits from event target. Um, and we're going to do the same thing here, we no longer need wrappable because uh, wrappable is the mechanism that we use or part of the mechanism for wrapping a C++ object in a JavaScript object. Uh, we no longer need that. Um, and I think we can get rid of this stuff. Uh, we don't need these. I already mentioned deleting them from event target, so that's just related to um, stuff that we no longer need there. and interesting thing about node is that until now we've been using this um, helper template called tree node which is essentially a bunch of helper functions for implementing a um, a tree with arbitrary number of children per node but now we're gonna stray so far away from tree node I think that it might actually make sense to it might make sense to not inherit from tree node anymore um, because yeah tree node tree node is uh, implicitly ref counted so I think yeah we're, we're just gonna have to not inherit from tree node and we have to implement tree functionality manually um, on node but that'll be okay it simplifies the event uh, the inheritance hierarchy significantly here as you can see Okay, uh, removed last ref also goes away basically because there is no longer such a thing as uh, going from one to zero ref count. Um, if you want to do something on destruction, you'll do it in the destructor. So we can nuke that. Or you know what, I'm going to leave that one there, but I'll say fix me, uh, move. Clean up to the regular destructor. Yeah. Um, I guess we can 
just just to make sure that we don't mess this up or, or forget about it, we can we can do it here. So removed ref fix me. Um, clean this up. Okay, so node.h. We need to probably yoink a whole bunch of stuff over from tree node. We're just gonna steal it, the things that we need. So we don't need the reference counting stuff, but everything else we can kind of just start by taking, I think. And tree node uses uh, the CRTP pattern. So we um, are gonna have to despecialize or whatever the template uh, code a little bit, but it's not going to be too painful, I think. Let's just put this here by the bottom of the public stuff. Okay. And don't need the ref count anymore. Don't need these debugging things. Um, definitely don't need that. And all of these can just be node, I think. Uh, in fact, we can even use JS GC putter just to be extra explicit that these are um, garbage collector pointers to garbage collected memory. And let's put these at the very bottom here as well of the private section. I don't know why the protected section here has a bunch of things. It's a little bit strange. Anyway. Um, okay, so Tree node destructor um, has been unreffing children. So we don't need to think about unreffing anybody anymore. Since we're moving into the garbage collector world, uh, it will take care of liveness analysis and um, anything related to reference cycles and so on. That will just get cleaned up. Uh, but we do have, since we're using CRTP, we do have a whole bunch of T now that we inherited from T node, so there's going to be like T const amp uh, in a bunch of places. Let's see if we can. Can we? Um, how do I? Can I just turn that into node? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, node const amp. Okay. T amp. Okay, and I also have these. So let's fix those up. Hmm, I guess everything related to tree node we'd also need to fix. Okay. Hmm, oh, I'm not doing this right. Okay, maybe I should just use the um, search and replace function. Okay, here we go. Node star. All right, we're getting there. Okay, and then these are now need a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra syntax here just to make these getters work with GC putter for now. Okay. How many errors do we have in the file? 39 problems. Yeah, but they're all simple things, so. Oops. Don't need you. Okay, and then we have some overlap. We can get rid of overlapping or like um, functions that were both in tree node and in node. We can just get rid of. 
here. I don't know what I managed to do here. I guess that's supposed to be false. I must have had a little mishap with the multi cursor. More multi cursor mishaps. That's embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know how I managed to make those things. But okay, now the remaining issues are we have a pen child and remove child. Um, so I think we can probably just nuke those. Um, yeah, that should be okay. All right, so what else happens next here? Now that we have at least um, C line is not complaining about anything in node. So let's go and look at one of nodes subclasses after of course we do the JS object macro. So element is the the most uh, common subclass of node. Oh, actually, it inherits from parent node. So we're going to have to get involved here already. That's fine. So parent node is I think in in the spec, it's an, a mix in um, parent node IDL. Yeah, it's an interface mix in. But of course, since C++ doesn't have mix ins, we use um, uh, we just use a, a basic subclass or extra class for the mix in instead and we inherit from that. Um, but it's supposed to be a mix in, but it doesn't matter in this case. So I guess we should we, we can do this just to um, be tidy. And then it doesn't have any members, so it doesn't need any special integration with um, telling the garbage collector visitor what to do. And we can instead jump further down to element. And um, I think these are actually other mixins that we're also inheriting. So yeah, that's what we do for mixins. That we just um, we yoink in functionality via um, inheritance. And you can see here for parent node, we don't use CRTP because it's uh, it's just used as the base class. But for these other two, uh, we use CRTP so that it knows which um, which class we're instantiating the mix in for. Okay, so element is a parent node. Sure. And we can get rid of this stuff. And um, oh, I was um, I have to add a visit virtual void visit edges because node definitely needs to uh, communicate to the garbage collector about all the different things that are reachable from this node. So let's see if we can sketch that out right away here just to see what that would look like because it's kind of interesting. Okay, so first with the ceremony, all right, and then copying in all this stuff. So now we're going to visit a bunch of things here. So we'll visit the document because that's a DOM node. It will be garbage collected. Uh, the layout tree will not be garbage collected, and these are not pointers, so we can just skip those. Um, the registered observer list. Hmm. So we're probably going to make um, we're going to make at least a mutation observer. So going to become garbage collected eventually. They're not garbage collected yet. Um, so for now, we can just leave these alone. Um, but I think eventually we'll have to come back here and um, visit the mutation observers and register registered observers stuff. Uh, but all of these we definitely have to visit. So like the children, parent, and first and first and last child, next and previous sibling, uh, all of those things, all the different pointers around in the DOM tree. Okay, that's pretty cool. Maybe we should put this in a GC putter as well. Just because it is um, GC putter, by the way, there's also a corresponding non null GC putter for pointers that are not allowed to be null. Um, and these are really just raw pointers wrapped in a fancy named 
uh, template struct. But the reason that I added these gcputter um, templates is so that we can at least communicate visually um, between us programmers that uh, something is a is a GC allocated thing or something a function returns a non-null GC allocated pointer instead of just returning you know a, a document star or a document amp you can you can have like more type information even if right now it's only used by us humans um, in the future we could um, do some kind of static analysis based on this stuff but right now it's just for us and just kind of thinking ahead a little bit with that because now seems like a good time to introduce such a thing all right so um going back to element let's see what we what we need to do here so element has um well so it already has a bunch of fields that are garbage collected and until now we've been using js handle to hold them so these will just convert to GC putter. Um, and actually, this makes me wonder element CPP. Are these M attributes? Yeah, they're, they're created in the constructor already here. So we could actually make them non null GC putter. Uh, okay. Inline style, not all elements have a style attribute, so that's definitely a plain GC putter. And then um, M attributes is no longer a handle, it's a, a non null GC putter, so we have to call that putter on it instead. Like these little peculiarities. Uh, okay, and then let's see. Element has a lot of subclasses, by the way. This is this is not going to be trivial. Class list. How is that created? Class list. Okay, it's instantiated on demand when somebody tries to access the class list on an element. Sure. So we will use a GC putter for that. Good enough. Okay. And the shadow root, shadow roots are also DOM nodes. So this thing has to become a GC putter as well. So this leaves us with, um, you know, I'm gonna put these together here just so it's easy, <laughs> easier to see them. All right, so these are the, currently the things that we need to visit. Uh, so let's go ahead and override visit edges. Okay, and implementing visit edges correctly, by the way, it's very, very important because if you miss visiting something, that means that the garbage collector could uh, delete the thing prematurely, uh, which could cause use after freeze uh, and just generally unpleasant behavior. So it's very important that you actually visit everything in visit edges. And it's one of the, um, it's, it's one of the, kind of sources of hard to track down bugs in our garbage collector implementation. And I don't love that, um, but in theory, it should be possible to, to do static analysis to, to verify that anything that needs to be visited is visited. And certainly now, if we become better at using these specific types to annotate uh, which things are GC allocated, um, such static analysis would be easier to implement because it, you know you could you can write a thing that checks oh do you have a GC putter member if so that member has to be visited by visit edges anyway right now we don't have that so we just rely on the good old honor system um, so let's see yeah. Okay, there we go. And that would just be like that maybe. And 
Oh, that doesn't work because this thing doesn't return a non-null GC putter. So we'll just make it do that. Yeah, and then we'll deal with implementing that correctly later. Right now, we just want to keep moving forward and get uh, get to a point where our headers are looking like they should. So for the next thing, we're going to look at subclasses of element, uh, I guess after taking care of these actually. So subclasses of element. So we have public element, public DOM element. So there are two main subclasses, SVG element and HTML element, both of whom have huge hierarchies underneath them. So I'm just going to go into HTML element and start there. Um, so the first thing we want to do is JS object macro, just make sure that the uh, base type def is set up correctly. And you're just, you're just telling it like, this is my class name and this is my parent class name. And uh, what it does is sets up this thing called base as a type def for the base class. And it also adds a class name getter, which you can then use to retrieve the name of the class uh, without RTTI or anything like that. Just a simple virtual call. All right. So wrapper type goes away. And um, do we have any interesting members? Yes, we have data set, which is a DOM string map formerly managed by um, JS handle. But now, where is it constructed? Always here. So we can actually make that a non-null GC putter. So let's go ahead and make that return that. There we go. OK, non-null GC putter. Cool. and. Um, so the, the reason that I'm doing the visit edges function right away for these classes is that I don't want to forget that. So it's easy, easier to do it when it's like really fresh in the memory instead of going back over these later and trying to identify everything that needs to be marked. Um, it just seems kind of nice to, to do it right away. So visitor, visit. Data set. All right, let's visit that data set. Make sure it gets marked. OK, so HTML element was simple, I would say. Um, but now let's see who inherits from HTML element. Oh, look, it's all of these. Cool. So I guess we can just start at the top pre-element. Who doesn't love pre-element? I know I've used pre-element to uh, put code on my web pages since I was a very young boy. Uh, <laughs> so this is the part where it's going to get real repetitive because I think in many of these cases, um, there isn't really so much interesting, anything interesting to do. We just need to add this macro, get rid of the wrapper thing, uh, and then we're just going to sort of go through these. Um, so let's at least let's let's roll with that and see how it goes. So public HTML element, I have a lot of these. So let's uh, let's just plow through O list. Goodbye. Uh, browsing context container. Um, I guess that's inherited by iframe and frame elements. So um, it's just for elements that may have a nested browsing context inside of them. Or browsing context is like spec language for frame. Um, and let's just be good boys and do a little macro thing here. But it has nothing to mark, just has a ref footer to browsing context, which is a C++ object that we don't need to garbage collect, at least not at this point in time. So I think we're good there. 
Let's look for more. Anchor element. Who doesn't love anchor element? One of my favorite elements. That's the A element. Uh, the full name of A is anchor. So HTML anchor element inherits from HTML element. Very exciting. Get rid of that. And again, here, no members, so nothing to mark. Um, so we can just carry on. That's very good. All right, area element, another one of those 90s HTML elements uh, used for creating image maps. No uh, interesting members to mark, so uh, this part should be pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, BR. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just fun to, to see all the different elements that we are visiting. It's kind of funny. Like, I've written so much HTML in my life. And I, I mean, I've also worked on web engines, but it still amuses me somehow that like all of those HTML elements have each have like a corresponding C++ class that, <laughs> that we have to implement the element. Um, I don't know why. It's, uh, I don't know why it's funny. It's like HTML is a language I learned as a child. So it just seems funny to me that, that these uh, things have um c plus plus classes and let's see dun, 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 dun. base element okay get rid of that base does not have any interesting children all right or interesting um Members, fine with me. Blink, another classic 90s element. Uh, one we have actually implemented ourselves, although the implementation is a little bit janky, as I recall. I can probably improve that uh, or even rebuild it on top of CSS animation once we implement that someday. But right now, body is next. So JS object, body element. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that these are just this very simple grunt work, actually. I was worried that there were gonna be, there was gonna be more stuff to think about in these, all of these subclasses, but really it's just grunt work to go through and, um, and update them all. So HTML button element. Okay, goodbye to the wrapper type. All right, no, no interesting members, that's good. Canvas element, all right, so JS object. Okay, and uh, the canvas element has a rendering context, which in turn holds on to either a 2D or 3D WebGL rendering context. Now, both of those are going to become garbage collected eventually, but right now they are just um, C++ objects still, so we don't have to uh, we don't have to mark them at this stage. So this is just like all the other elements to have no interesting fields. Dlist element like the absolute lowest tier of celebrity elements. Because um, I, don't, I don't think there's an e-list element. So this is as, as low, low as it goes. Uh, data element, all right. Data element, I forget what that's for. Is that for, um, what's data element for? <laughs> Is that, um, is that for embedding objects or something like that? I gotta look it up. Data element, hmm. Is 
the data element when combined this okay microdata attributes hmm okay well i'm just going to ignore that i don't remember how to use the data element uh, but we have it so that's nice okay just doing the same mechanical editing data list element okay Uh, details element. I don't think we have a f rendering uh, implementation of details and summary. That would be a good thing to work on at some point. Uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to copy that out. Directory element, I don't know what that is, but we have it. Apparently it's marked obsolete, but required according to the, uh, according to the spec. Okay, div, here's the workhorse of every browser engine. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so many of these need more work, by the way. Like just because we ha just because a class is present doesn't mean that it has all of the uh, behaviors necessary. Um, a lot of these are sort of placeholders almost. Okay. All right. So field set, also no interesting fields, despite being a field set element. Okay. Hmm. Okay, form element. I feel like form element feels like this kind of element that might have something special going on. Like some kind of something. Oh, look, it has a vector of weak pointers to associated elements. That's kind of cool. Um, I forget how that's supposed to work. Yeah, add associated element, remove associated element. So I think elements sort of add and remove themselves from being registered with the form as they go. So this could probably, would probably be better as a GC putter. Uh, and then we um we're just gonna mark these fellas so finally we get to write another visit edges function okay um. Oh, we have to iterate. Associated, oh, let's just call it element. Okay. After form comes from A. Hmm. Okay, and then frame set. I guess I could, maybe I could edit these in the find window, actually. I wouldn't have to research every time. See if we can tweak the size of that there. Okay, so frame set element. Okay. HR. Mm hmm It's the element you complain to when the other elements are behaving badly. Okay. Head element. Do you have something interesting going on, head? No. Uh, heading 
If you're not familiar, HTML heading is the uh, interface name for the h1, h2, h3, all the way up through six elements. Okay. The HTML, HTML element in the HTML namespace. Right, inherits from HTML element. <laughs> so this is the uh, this element, right? The HTML tag, if you will, uh, is implemented by this class, sometimes known as the root element in HTML documents. Uh, also does not have any interesting fields. Well, well. OK, get rid of the wrapper type def. Do we have anything interesting? Image loader, do you have anything interesting? Not really, just a back pointer to the object that it sits in, but that doesn't need anything. All right, uh, image input. Our input system definitely needs some love um, to support more, um, more input elements in general. I didn't write that in the right order. And also, we need to get better at switching between input types, because uh, I think if you make an input element, you can update the type attribute. You can do something like this, right? Input type text. Uh, now you have a text box, and then you use JavaScript to switch this to button, and it needs to like switch over to a button. Uh, I'm not sure we implement that today correctly, so it's something we should probably um probably do better okay so do you have any interesting fields yes text node finally something and also a legacy pre-activation behavior checked element in group ah <sighs> that was hard to say uh so we have finally some things here to mark gc putter to a text node and a gc putter to an another input element so i'll put those like that and does anybody inherit input element? I don't think so. No, not possible because it's final. So we will make a visitor function. And let's implement it. Mm -hmm. So we have our visitor and we will visit the base class first make sure that all of all of the base class stuff gets marked uh, and then then we will also visit these cool okay back to this grind uh, we were on input element now for li the list item element Yeah, another pretty uninteresting element. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do it like that. Copy that. Okay. All right. We are working our way through here. It is. Oh, we're on L at least. All right. Does link element have anything? Nothing garbage collected. All right. Map element again, nothing. Cool. Marquee. That's another um, 90s favorite. I remember when IE came out. And IE was the first to support the marquee element, as I recall. And it was so cool <laughs> at the time. Like the coolest effect we had before marquee was blink. And then we got marquee. And I don't think we support marquee and serenity. Or do we marquee? Um, marquee pain. Um, no, I don't think we do. Uh, another thing that we might be able to do 
in terms of CSS animations once we have that. I think right now it's just a dummy element that just exists um, because we're required to provide a, an interface class, but that doesn't mean that the element has the expected behavior. Oh, wait, did I have this? Yes. Okay. Ah, media element, menu. Okay, well, we're going to make it through all of these. That's, uh, that's just going to take a, a moment. HTML Facebook element. All right. Um, <laughs> the meter element. Can't say I've used that for anything. Same thing with mod. I don't think I've ever used mod either. Other than maybe making a test case for mod at some point. Uh, Olist. Oh, that's one of the f early ones I did. Just ad hoc. All right. Hmm. Does option have anything new? Nope, nope, nope. Output element. All right. No interesting fields. Oh, we're, we're making our way to the bottom here. We're, we're going to get there. Um, although, don't want to skip any. Paragraph element. Of course, that's the P element. Uh, much often misunderstood element, which some very peculiar behaviors um, implemented in the parser. Um, like um, if you if you forget to close a P, then the, um, the parser will do all this magic, assuming that you meant to close the P, and it will just close it for you in these um, very specific ways. Param element, picture element. Oh, picture. We need to implement picture element, by the way. I saw that used on some website where we were not displaying images. Uh, I think it was because they were using the picture element instead of just IMG. Uh, progress quote element. All right. So script element is likely to have some stuff going on. Yeah, so here we have at least two pointers to the document. So these are going to be GC putters instead of weak putters. So this is an example of something that, that becomes a lot better now, by the way. Um, so we have a script element has pointer to the parser document and the document um, at preparation time, um, which is a spec concept. But previously, we had to make these pointers weak um, because if we pointed to the script element from the document and from the document to the script element, um, or, or if we point if they pointed at each other, <laughs> um, then you can't have a strong pointer in both directions, right? Because then you would leak. So we had to uh, always resort to this pattern of having like one strong, one weak, and bidirectional pointers, and that is error prone, let's say. And this new way of um, approaching this means that we can have GC putter in all directions. And then the garbage collector will just figure out if there are cycles and um, do the right thing, which is great. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement that right away for script element. Um, I already forgot what they were called. That's what they were called. Okay, visitor, sure. Cool. 
Okay, so back on the saddle. Uh, back to select element. All right, what do you have for us, select element? Get rid of the wrapper type. Probably forgot to get rid of the wrapper type somewhere already, but we'll figure that out soon enough. Um, HTML collections are not yet garbage collected, although they will be eventually uh, in a subsequent patch. Okay, slot element, easy peasy. Source element goes with picture, I think. Span, the second uh, workhorse of modern HTML, or modern, <laughs> um, non-90s, post-1990s HTML, I guess. Uh, style element, do you have something interesting for me? Yes, it has a handle pointer to the associated style sheet which can now be a GC putter. So that means that we're going to need a visit function. <laughs> I wonder if this is the most repetitive video I have made so far. I um, was definitely thinking originally that I was not going to record this because I thought this will be repetitive and um, repetitive and also repetitive. But then I thought, you know what? JT was just telling me last week or the week before that something like, oh, why don't you record a video when you do these repetitive refactoring tasks? It would be interesting to see what that's like. So here we are <laughs> doing repetitive refactoring tasks. Um, this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, so back on the horse once again, public HTML element. A style was the last one, yes, and now table caption. Oh. Sure, there we go. And then table cell. Table call. Ah, table. Okay, well, we are on T at least. Once we get to T, I'm not that many letters left in the alphabet to work through. Um, especially not in the English alphabet, which pleasantly ends at Z, unlike the Swedish alphabet, which goes on for another three. <laughs> Fun facts about Sweden. Okay, I messed up my clipboard once again. Okay, so table section element, template element, template element. Ooh, it has a DOM document fragment. That is definitely a DOM node, so that's going to have to be a GZ putter. At last, we get to implement another visit edges override. Exciting. All right, so you come with me. We will go here. Uh, base, visit edges, visit tour. And then you will also visit my content. Okay. So that was template. And then we have text area. Mm. Okay, text area element. Uh, where did you go? Text area element. Wrapper type go away. And then time was at the top for some reason. I don't know why that would happen. 
feel like they should be in alphabetical order, but time was at the top of my search results. Slightly mysterious. Text area, title element. Mm. Who doesn't love the title element? I'm still not completely sure, by the way, when we should update the title uh, during parsing, that a window title. Uh, I'm sure it says in the spec somewhere exactly when it should occur, but I don't think I ever found a um, straight answer to that question. Let's see, track element. Now we are uh, in, back in the esoteric elements. Oh, wait, we only have two more left. Oh my goodness. That's so exciting. U list and finally unknown element. Unknown element, of course, goes on the <laughs> HTML iceberg if you have ever managed to instantiate an unknown element. Uh, okay, cool. So I think we uh, we did the at least the direct uh, subclasses of HTML element we've done, and that went okay. How many subclasses of SVG element are there? So there are two, but then I bet um, SVG graphics element has more subclasses. Yeah, it has more. And then, hmm. Hmm. we can also look at what other event target subclasses are there. So there's node, which we worked on, and there's a board signal. Ooh, and then there's window object or um, HTML window. That's one I would definitely like to investigate. Hmm. So this is um, this is the the global object for HTML documents. So let's see what we would do to that one. Um, it's kind of a messy object actually because we currently we currently have normally we generate code for the JavaScript side of things. And then we have a C++ uh, object that has like handwritten code by humans. But the window object is special. For the window object, we have a C++ class called window. Then we also have a JavaScript class called window object. And both of them are handwritten. Um, and it's a um, little bit, a little bit of a um, little bit, a lot of stuff going on here, let's say. Um, and I wonder if we could be able, if we would be able to merge these into one now, that really seems like what we should be doing. So that's going to be a bit of a bit of a whole thing. Um, maybe we can start by just making window inherit from, it already inherits from event target. So now it's going to become a JavaScript object no matter what we do. So we'll do that, and then we'll say JS object window uh, inherits from DOM event target. And here, when you create these, you're going to get a non-null GC putter. And you're going to have to provide a JavaScript realm, I think, or we don't really know how to create one for you. Uh, we don't need reference counting anymore, so that goes away. Create wrapper goes away. Um, and it's definitely going to need some visit function. So, hmm. Yeah, so we'll go like that. Dum, dum, dum. I'm just going to sketch this out to see that it, how it goes. There are so many, um, so many classes that we need to tweak up, just like we were doing for the HTML elements. We do have to do the same to the SVG classes, and then um, also to abort signal and now window object. So let's see what we can mark here. So this guy we can mark associated document is now a DOM node. Wrapper that's interesting. We're not going to have a wrapper anymore. So all of that stuff is actually going to fold into here. So I guess we should get rid of that. Um, 
these guys are going to become garbage collected objects eventually, but right now they're not, so we'll leave them alone. Um, JS handle that uh, can be a GC putter, the current event. So I will yoink you up here just for overview. Okay, idle callback. What is idle callback? It's a ref counted right now. That's probably okay. Um, maybe that is something that wants to be garbage collected eventually, but right now it's not. Okay, so right now we just need to visit these two at the very first cut. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. Visitor, visit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you don't want to visit that one? Why not? Um, not sure I understand your objection. Visitors take cell star or cell amp. You can see document because you have the include. Hmm. Let's see. I'm just going to clean up some random code here. Realm, heap, allocate, window. Is that enough? I need to deref there. Okay. Oh, that's a private function. Okay, so we need to um, need to lift out the constructor and make it public in order to be able to use um, use the JS heap allocator helper. It's a little unfortunate. Mm. Wait, we're not related by inheritance. What are you saying? JS cell to HTML window. But I am a JavaScript object, you jerk. Okay, I don't know why it's protesting that. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure that we'll eventually figure out the reason for that complaint. In the meantime, uh, we can do something like document dot preferred window object. Um, actually, that's kind of a uh, heap. Oh wait, document has a heap already, doesn't it? Can why can't you see this? Like why is Hmm. What is it here that you don't like about me right now? Platform object. Ooh. Oh, are we not seeing the include correctly? Okay, was that the whole problem? It was. All right. <laughs> um See, so we just need a realm here, so we can get that from document. Yeah, we'll we'll get it from there. Uh, and then star should bring it home. Okay. Um, here, what did we pass to event target? I already forget. The window object. Oh, right. So that we can find the um, prototype. Well, the window object is me. Oh, shoot. Um, right. So when you're creating the window object, <laughs> event target is not going to be able to find uh, the event target prototype from the window object. So we're going to need a different constructor specifically for um, 
Actually, maybe maybe it's okay to only have this constructor because every nobody instantiates event target directly. Everything there are subclasses of event target, but nobody ever creates an event target directly. So um, I think nobody, no object that we construct is going to initially have the event target prototype as its prototype. So maybe that's okay. We can just set it up with. Um, uh, what do we do? Can we do something like um, heap? Can we get to the realm? No, we can't. Um, we need some prototype to have as the initial prototype. Or can we make it prototype less object? Um, if we have a realm, then we can pass in what appears to be a null prototype. Let's try that. So let's say realm and, oh wait, that's one step up. Okay, let's just say um, platform object. I only want to do this for, or do I want to do this for all event targets? I guess I do. Okay, so let's have a way to do it here. So if you don't have an initial prototype, we will also have a constructor for that. Okay, and that will call up to JS object realm null putter. All right. So we can use that when we instantiate event target. Um, realm, right? Okay. And we'll also have the empty one. Okay. Mm. Or no, we, we can't have an empty one. Hmm. No, okay, let's do it this way. That's fine. So everybody has to provide a realm. We'll work it out somehow. Okay, so when we're constructing the widget, the, the window, then window has to communicate to event target. Um, what are we passing up? We're passing ourselves. No, we don't want to do that. We just want to pass up the realm then. So we'll have to take the realm here. Okay, and then we need a constructor for that because the realm gets created before everything else. That was one of the big things that Linus unblocked uh, was making sure that we can uh, we can get to a state where we make the realm first and then other objects can come in after that. Um, this whole construction order has to be very intricately compatible with what you're trying to do. So let's see. Um, bam, bam, bam. I don't know if we actually need to have two um, separate constructors here. I suspect that this constructor could go away. Um, maybe I can even make this a delegating constructor at this point. Or, uh, no, wait, it wants to store the associated document, right? So I guess it can't be, can't just delegate. Um, but I can do this. I can do this. Okay. Um, what is the window object prototype anyway? Window prototype. Oh, so that's a thing. Huh, I didn't realize that was a thing. Window prototype. Hmm.
wonder, yeah, we don't have window prototype currently. I guess that's something that we could. Um, we probably should have. So is there a window constructor? I guess so. Ah, uh, no, illegal constructor. All right, well, now we're out swimming in the in the orange part of the ocean. So let's just ignore that. Uh, okay, so what happens here? We have a realm and we have to pass it twice, I think. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Uh, 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 uh. So normally we should be setting a some kind of prototype, but event target doesn't set its own prototype anymore. So we're gonna have to manually do that. Fix me. Uh, should this be window prototype? And where on earth do we get that from? Oh right, it's a window object. I didn't merge them yet. So this is gonna be a whole thing. So this, all of this gunk has to come with me over to, um, over to the other side, over to HTML window. So currently it inherits from JS global object. Another thing that Linus has been steadily getting rid of, although I'm sure that we still use it in a bunch of places. 55 matches in 28 files. Yeah, that used to be probably like 5,000 matches in every file ever. So it's almost gone. Although um, the JavaScript console is still hooked up through the global object. So we need to abstract that out somehow, but I'm probably just gonna ignore that for now. And let's just see how it would look if we mash the window object into uh, the window class. Um, if we just take, I guess we'll just take all of this stuff. No better time than now. Yoink. Okay. And come with me if you want to become a much bigger class. Um, this is definitely a bit of a mess. So location object, we need to include, I guess. Okay. Wrapper, the wrapper goes away. There's no wrapper anymore. Uh, these are just putter. These are bindings location object. Yup, yup, yup. Incomplete type heap. All right, well, we can definitely include that. Lib.js heap. Okay, cross origin property descriptor map is in the bindings namespace. Is this a double declare? Cannot be redeclared. That's fine. Um, okay, ignoring that for a moment. Okay, so it seems like we have some kind of a dependency issue here because I tried to import heap, but I'm not allowed to. So let's see, can we prune a bunch of stuff here? I think we don't need window object because we are that. We need event target. Um, I don't think we need event. Browsing context, I don't think we need that. We're just dealing in pointers to browsing context. Uh, screen, that's a non-null own putter. Don't think we need that either. Hmm. Incomplete type JS heap. Why you gotta be like that? Hmm. <sighs> That's a bit annoying. All right, so 
there's no way that heap includes me. So who who is yoinking in the heap thing? We are an event target, right? Okay, we definitely were not allowed to take document out, but I feel like we should be able to if we make those things out of line helpers instead. So let's see if we can do that. So these should definitely be out of line so that we don't need to include document.h. Okay. What don't you like? That's oh, all good. All right. What's a timer handler? It's from window object.h. Okay, we can bring that over. So I'll put that up here. All right. Okay, redundant parameter names. Mm -hmm. Still incomplete type heap, all right. What else do I need to get rid of? We're not a wrappable anymore. Media query list, why is that here? Because we have a function that returns a ref footer to it. Come on now. Animation frame callback driver. That thing needs to be here. Yep. Location object is just something we should be able to forward declare. Yep. So let's put that in libweb forward. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait, location object is here. Oh, but it's not in bindings. Uh, or is it? Wait, hold on. We don't have libweb forward, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, wait, I got all kinds of errors after making the last couple of changes there. Okay, location object is very sensitive to location object, apparently. So what do we get from location object dot h? JS things, okay. So completion and cross origin abstract ops. Do we need these maybe? Let's just bring them with us and see if that is enough to satisfy this finicky thing. So if we substitute that for that, okay, that was good enough. So then do we need you? Yes, we did. Okay, so this guy had stuff. And it's all just forwarding headers. Hmm. Media feature value. Where's that declared? Media query dot h. Uh, and it is a class. So let's forward declare that. Uh, web CSS. Okay. There you go. We still can't use heap. Hmm. JS heap. Oh wait, now I don't have it included even. So if I include heap.h, it's still incomplete. 
Um, why is that? Wonder if I add some more stuff, will I get it? Okay, um, well, if those are the only things messing us up right now, maybe that's not the end of the world. Let's see, window, set wrapper, that can go away because we don't have wrappers. Uh, did we need more stuff from window object? These are just initialization functions. I think we don't need this stuff. If I bring all this, will it just work on this side? No, it didn't. Okay, so uh, we still don't know what's up with that. But uh, I think we can we can ignore that and, and plow forward on other stuff, and then we'll eventually have to work it out. Um, and I think <laughs> this is going to be as good a time as any to end the video, because as you can see, there is just no shortage of, of stuff to work on here. And uh, I'm not able to record forever, so I have to stop at some point. Um, but um, yeah, this is this is what I'm working on right now. Just trying to uh, reorganize the code base to put these classes on top of the uh, garbage collected inheritance hierarchy instead, so that we don't have to deal with the reference cycles. So I'm gonna keep working on this and grinding it out. Uh, and this pull request right here, one four eight one six, uh, is where I will eventually post my uh, changes when they are building and working and, and so on. Uh, we'll see how long that takes. But uh, yeah, this will be the end of the video. So if you made it this far, then uh, wow, thank you for watching. I, <laughs> I really hope that you saw something interesting. And um, it was weird to definitely weird to make something not so focused on building a thing or solving a problem, but rather just here is the mundane day to day work that I'm also doing, but previously not really making videos about. Uh, I hope that was at least interesting somehow. So thank you for for visiting. Um, I will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>